David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Um, when I'm scheduling out my reviews, I, I try to vary the brands as well as the price points, kind of mixing it up between pens with a lower price point and those that are more expensive. Uh, as well as varying the familiarity of the pens, um, ones that you've most likely heard of compared to some that are might be new to you. Um, today, I have a pen that should be very familiar to most of you, uh, but it's one that I have never reviewed on my channel. Uh, and with the recent introduction of one of their limited edition colors, I thought it was a good time to do so. And that pen is the Lamy Safari. Uh, what I'm going to do is go over the parts and the features of the Lamy Safari, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, show some measurements, size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, oh, I just wanted to mention up front that I will uh, be attending the Atlanta Pen Show coming up next week. Uh, it's a show that I haven't attended before, and I've heard nothing but great things about it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, if you're at the show and see me walking around, make sure to say hi. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, on a yearly basis, Lamy has come out with limited edition colors of the Safari. Um, last year, it was the wildly popular Dark Lilac, and this year, it is the Petrol. Um, they also came out with an accompanying ink, but the Petrol ink won't be hitting stores in the U.S. until early May, I believe. So, um, I've actually committed myself to try a few ink reviews coming up here to see how those go. So you might just see one, an ink review of the Petrol coming up soon. Uh, and uh, that uh, I'll definitely do one for that when it comes out. Uh, the Safari was designed by Wolfgang Fabian. Uh, you know, I like that Lamy gives prominent credit to their designers. Uh, here on their site, you can actually see who designed each of their pen models. I just think that's kind of cool. Now, some of the features of this pen and the packaging are uh, are like that of another Lamy pen, the All-Star. Uh, and I reviewed the All-Star twice, once in my very first review, and then, then again uh, about two months ago or so when their uh, Pacific Blue color was released. So some of this info will be repeated a bit from those previous reviews just because they're so similar. Um, but the pen arrives in a box just like this. Uh, which is kind of a thick paper, uh, which kind of has an interesting ridge design. I, I just like it. Um, first of all, the, 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 the box is rather small and square, and I believe this is mainly because the Safari is often sold at display stands in uh, brick and mortar stores. Uh, and a smaller box means you can store more pens in the display. Uh, you know, I actually also like the, the slits that are on either side of the box. Uh, this allows you to kind of see the color of the pen without having to open it up to make sure you're purchasing what you're intending to purchase. Uh, the box opens up and inside the pen is clipped to this piece of thick paper, which kind of keeps the, the pen secure inside the box so it isn't bouncing around in there. Uh, and there is the the pen included with the piece of paper. There's the standard Lamy uh, use and care guide. And then we have the pen, the Lamy Safari Petrol. Um, a couple of things here. Uh, they include a, a UPC label uh, on the pen because sometimes at brick and mortar stores, they will sell these pens loose. So let's actually go ahead and take that off. Um, the other thing you'll notice right away is there's this bit of cardboard at the back end of the barrel, or right here at the end of the barrel, uh, which serves a distinct person, per purpose. Excuse me. For right now, I'm just going to take it off. We'll get back to that in a little bit. Um, the pen is made from a, a very sturdy plastic. Uh, and it has a matte pebbled texture that I, uh, I really like a lot. Uh, I like it better than some of the other Lamy models, uh, the Safari models that have had more of a slicker plastic feel to them. And I'm really liking this blue-green color of the Petrol a great deal. You know, it's not a very common, common color when it comes to fountain pens, and uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, let's start here at the finial, where there is an X on the, black, uh, the matte black plastic piece, which is the same piece which is on uh, most all safaris. Uh, now, on some of the older models, this piece actually matched the color of the rest of the pen, but just from a manufacturer standpoint, it's more efficient to have a single piece used across multiple pens. Uh, in regard to the uh, X, the X actually indicates this is a fountain pen. Uh, the safari ballpoints will actually have just a single 
lime. Um, there is a slight trough which encircles the cap, and then we have the iconic Lamy clip. Uh, on the Petro model, it's black, and while it's minimalistic, uh, it's extremely functional. Uh, it will fit just fine on a thin shirt pop pocket or even just a thin shirt. Uh, and uh, even it'll fit just fine on a, uh, a thicker pocket material like you might find a pair of jeans or something like that. Uh, and I think the black clip really complements the color uh, better than uh, a silver color colored clip would do, which is on some of their other Safari models. Um, there is a step down to uh, the barrel. Now the barrel isn't perfectly straight, um, there is about three quarters of a millimeter downslope from the beginning of the barrel to the end of the barrel. Uh, and the barrel is circular with two sides flattened. Uh, and then at the end of the barrel is a circular design and it is stamped with Germany. Uh, toward the end of the barrel here uh, is an embossed Lamy logo, which uh, I, I like for its subtlety. Um, then a further up we have uh, what I consider to be one of the best design ink windows on just about any fountain pen. Um, this elongated oval gives you a really good look at your ink level whether or not you are using cartridges or using a converter. Um, what I really like about it is the elongated shape. Most ink windows are more circular and kind of narrow and those have a tendency to kind of give you a positive or negative showing you whether you have ink or whether you don't have ink. Uh, what I really like about this oval is that it does a really good job of letting you see the ink level and see it lower so that you can anticipate when you need to change cartridges or refill the converter. Uh, I just like the warning that it gives you. It helps uh, to eliminate surprises. The cap snaps off to reveal this black steel nib. Um, going with the, the black nib as well as the black clip on this pen I think was a, a really good choice. I just think that it uh, complements the blue green better than the silver would have or a silver nib. Uh, it's engraved with M for medium uh, and then Lamy. And then here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, Lamy nibs are easily interchangeable. They just slide right off. Um, and the Safari is a really great pen to experiment with when it comes to nibs. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive. They run around $13 in the U.S. And changing the nib can really change the personality of the pen. Um, for example, if you really wanted to try out a stub nib, uh, Nami, Lamy offers a 1.1, a 1.5, and even a 1.9. Um, if you have a Safari, or for that matter, an All Star or a Vista, uh, trading out the nib is a lot less inexpensive, or a lot less expensive than uh, purchasing an entire new pen. Uh, you know, I wouldn't categorize Lamy's entry-level nibs as spectacular, uh, but they are decent. Uh, they're fairly smooth for an inexpensive steel nib, uh, and they get the job done. Now, the section of the uh, Safari is a bit polarizing. Um, there are some that don't care for it because it has uh, these two flat edges that force you into a triangular grip. Now, I don't mind it at all because that's my normal grip, but uh, if that's not your standard grip, then it might be a little uncomfortable for you. Uh, you know, I like that the flat part of the barrel will always be the part of the barrel that's resting on your hand. Um, there's actually two threads between the section and barrel, which mean that when you screw it together, the embossed logo will either be facing up or facing down. Uh, and that uh, the texture of the logo is relatively smooth, so it doesn't bother me if you feel it on your hand if it happens to be facing down. Uh, the Safari is a very light pen. Uh, the cap does post, and it does post very securely. Uh, and I tend to like the additional weight of posting this cap. Uh, it gives it a little bit more heft. But like for me personally, I find that the edge of the cap is a bit on the sharp side and it rubs right between my thumb and forefinger right here. So uh, for me personally, that's a little bit uncomfortable, but everyone's hands are different, so it might lay differently in yours. The Safari is a cartridge converter pen and 
It is uh, included with or included with the pen comes a Lamy Blue cartridge. Now, okay, first of all, since Lamy is coming out with an ink to match this pen, I'm not sure why they didn't include a cartridge of the petrol ink with the petrol pen. Um, you know, in, including a blue cartridge rather than the petrol doesn't make much sense to me. You know, I know that last year with the dark lilac, those came with a blue cartridge as well. So I just think that's a bit of a missed opportunity, I think. Uh, the standard Lamy cartridges are a bit on the long side, as you see. Uh, and while uh, you can uh, push the cartridge in, um, it's really designed so that, remember the piece of cardboard that we took out? The reason why that's there is because uh, they actually store a, uh, a cartridge in the pen when you have it, and having this piece here prevents it from twisting down, which will then pierce the cartridge because it fits in there rather snugly, and if you don't have this and you twist it down, it will actually pierce the cartridge and, and securely keep it in there. Uh, and that they ha they include this inside the pen uh, so that it doesn't have to uh, uh, roll around and, uh, and be loose inside the box. Now, um, a, a Lamy converter is not provided with the pen, but they do have their Z28 converters like this one here that are very easy to find. Now, on the side, of this uh, converter, uh, there are two little things called nubbins. Um, apparently this is a number one nubbin. Uh, on the section here, there is a part which is kind of U-shaped, uh, and that part lines up with the oval ink window, uh, but then the uh, little nubbins here get inserted into the other grooves uh, in the section, and you push it down and they will lock in so that uh, there is less of a chance of your conver converter coming loose. Uh, this pen cannot be used in an eyedropper because of the ink windows here, which are just a hole through the barrel. Uh, the Safari, I think, is the epitome of a knockabout pen. Uh, it's perfect to throw on the bottom of a book bag or a backpack. Uh, and not that I'm rough with mine, but if it gets a ding or two on it, in my opinion, it just kind of adds to the character of the pen. Now, a, uh, a black Safari was actually my, my second fountain pen I ever owned. Uh, my first was a Lamy All-Star. And I've gotten a ton of use out of my Safari. Uh, while the Safari is a fantastic entry-level pen that I highly recommend, if given the choice between the two, uh, I personally prefer the All-Star. There's just something I like about the cool feeling of the aluminum, and it just has a little bit more weight to it. But the Safari is an outstanding pen in its own right. And in regard to this special edition petrol color, though, I think Lamy has really hit it out of the park again. I think this is just a very, very sharp color, uh, and I can't wait to try out the petrol ink. So now it's time for some measurements size comparisons, and then a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Lamy Safari Petrol. Uh, here it is with a Lamy Vista. Uh, then here it is with a Lamy All Star. Uh, and then here it is with another Lamy that doesn't get a lot of attention, but was one of my first fountain pens I owned that used uh, got a lot of use out of this, was called the Lamy Nex. I think they've redesigned this, but uh, uh, at the time I got a lot of use out of this pen, and that's how it compares to the Nex. Then regard to some blue pens, uh, here it is with one of my favorite blue pens. This is the Edison uh, Menlo Pump Filler. I just love the blue tra the swirls on that pen. Uh, and then here it is with a Visconti Divina. Uh, and then my most recent purchase, something that I picked up when I was in New York and was visiting the uh, Fountain Pen Hospital, is the uh, Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear Sky. Uh, I just loved the size of this pen, and I wasn't intending to purchase this when I walked into the store, uh, but as soon as I saw it, this, uh, this transparent blue uh, on the king of pens that I just, I, I couldn't walk out of the store without it. But that is what it looks like in comparison to the Safari. Oh, you know, one thing uh, in regard to the 
uh, Safari, uh, one thing that for the most part the design is the same as the uh, as the All Star, but something I, I I noticed here is that on the Safari this little black piece right here uh, it is affixed to the section, but then on the All Star that same black piece is affixed to the barrel. I just thought that was interesting. On the Vista uh, it's affixed to the section as well. So here we have the Lamy Safari. This is a medium steel nib and the ink that I'm using today is Ackerman. Blau Grown. And that is number 24 in their line. Uh, this is what the ink looks like. Uh, that uh, I didn't have a ton of blue greens, but that's uh, one that I, I actually really enjoy. Uh, and this one is a little more uh, growing than Blau, I think. Uh, in comparison to something like Noodler's 54th Mass, which is another one of my favorite uh, inks in general, but uh, that blue-green is a little more blue than green. Uh, and then we have something like uh, Irosuzuku uh, Kujaku, which is a little more vibrant and a little more on the green side of uh, green-blue. Uh, this is what the, the bottle looks like for the Ackerman inks. Uh, it's one of my favorite bottle designs. Uh, that I just think it looks really cool. And also, it's very utilitarian. Uh, there is a marble here in this skinny section. So what happens is you turn the ink upside down, ink gets trapped in this section here, then when you turn it over, the marble prevents it from coming back in, and so you have a real large section up here in order to fill from. So even if you have uh, fountain pens like that King of Pen that I showed you that has a very large nib, and sometimes it's difficult to get into some bottles, uh, it works just fine here in, the, uh, uh, in these Ackerman bottles, which I, I like very much. So here we go with the writing sample. Uh, for uh, a relatively inexpensive nib, uh, it's fairly smooth and performs very well. Uh, that you know, I, I've really never had any problems with these nibs as far as hard starts and things like that. It's one of those pens that you've had in your bag for a while. You can pick it up and, and it'll just write. Um, you're not going to get a ton of line variation. It is a fairly stiff nib. Uh, there is a, a decent amount of flow to it. Um, that uh, and then in regard to reverse writing, it is a little bit on the uh, on the sharp side, but it gets the job done. Uh, and then in regard to some fast writing, there's no issues whatsoever. So here we have the Lamy Safari, and this is in the uh, petrol version. Uh, like I mentioned previously, that I think Lamy had really uh, knocked it out of the park when it comes to this petrol color. Uh, I'm really looking forward to checking out the ink as well, but uh, but I like this. I think it fits well in the rainbow, that there isn't anything too similar to it, uh, and so that it's something that I, I do care for. Uh, and then, in general, the Safari is a, a classic pen that performs outstanding. And especially for uh, someone who's relatively new to fountain pens, uh, it's a pen that I would highly, highly recommend. So thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you later.